again today we'll start with the various types of research methods now this is an important very very important topic i would say for net examination uh, before we start understanding why do we need various types of research methods or there are different types of research method let's understand why there is a need for different research methods so let's say i have case 1 where there was a tsunami and after the tsunami i am i am studying the effect of it on the people in that area in case b i have uh, a kind of new drug that has been released in the market I'm a, and i am trying to understand the impact of that drug on the uh, age group say 5 to 15 years now these two are different cases and the methodology or the approach that I would use for case 1 and case 2 would be entirely different. Since in case 1 there is something that has already happened and we are studying the impact after the event is over, we would be using a kind of exposed factor research, we will see further what it means. In case 2, we are trying to do an experiment of a new drug that has been released on an age group of 5 to 15 years and hence we would be using a kind of experimental design. So the approach or the methodology that I am using to study case A and case B is entirely different. So it's important to understand the various research methods and which method should be applied where is an integral part of it. Now most of the questions when they are asked you have either a case study or a scenario given or a uh, e uh, event given and then you are asked to say or asked what kind of research would be applied in this in, in a case like this. So in all those cases you need to be very clear about the concepts of the various types of research. Now before we move further to the individual types of research, let's first understand the basic framework. Now the framework says, uh, we have already covered this on the session on research methodology that we have covered previously. Now here what we are trying to understand is, we have a kind of research problem, we have the logic of the research, why we are using a certain research and then we use a type of research and this is what we will be focusing today. Our entire focus would be exclusively on the type of research design today. And finally, based on the type of research design that you are using, you devise a methodology. For example, if say uh, all my research is quantitative, I will use more of the statistical analysis. So the methodology that would be used would be determined by the type of research design that I am using. Now let's start with the various research methods. Now we are classifying the research methods under 14 major heads. Now this would be considered as one major head. However, there are two types of researches that we would be discussing. Now basic research versus applied research. Basic research is also known as pure research or fundamental research. Basic research tries to devise or move to move forward to understand a new knowledge. So what is important under a basic research is you are trying to formulate a new theory. So it's advancement of the existing theory or uh, a step towards formulating a new theory. That's what we deal under the basic research or pure research or fundamental research what we say. Now this kind of research is usually done in technical language. So a person in a specific subject matter who is an expert in a subject matter can very well comprehend it but a common man cannot understand it. For example, if I do a basic research in say physics, a person from a background of physics would be well able to comprehend it but a person from a background of humanities may, may or might, might or might not be able to uh, comprehend that. The next type of research that we are talking about is applied research. Now applied research aims to solve specific problems. So that's the key here. Under fundamental research, we are trying to gain a new knowledge. So we are trying to explore all the areas, why, what, how, where. So all those would come under fundamental research. But when it comes to applied research, we are merely, merely focusing on the specific problem. 
So when we are focusing on one single problem, our aim is to get an immediate solution for the problem. So immediate solution to the problem is another aim. And since applied research is aimed at a specific problem, it is usually in a common man's language that everyone from all backgrounds can understand. The next type of research is fixed versus flexible. Now fixed research is a research where you have a kind of design that is fixed it is driven by theory and it is measured quantitatively. So since you have fixed parameters, the only way you can measure is through numbers. So it's quantitative measurement. However, under flexible research, you have more freedom of data collection. I can say I'm collecting data through interviews, through surveys, through phone te uh, telephonic interviews or telephonic uh, uh, questionnaires. So all those would come under flexible research where I'm having more than one dimension of research. And finally, you have the quality, uh, the flexible research is qualitative in nature. The next type we will understand is quantitative versus qualitative. Now, as the name goes, quantitative works with data collection or numbers. So, what we are trying to do here is understand the various collection methods and analysis of the data. So, this data is mainly statistically analyzed and the data that is obtained is mainly in the form of questionnaires, checklists or surveys. This quantitative method assumes that world is stable and what we can do is we can measure or quantify the data. However, qualitative data on the other hand says that the world is unstable, it's not coherent. So, every uh, idea of one people differs from the idea of another people. So, it's not uniform and what we need to measure is through non-numeric ways like observation, interview. So, all these behavioral techniques would come under qualitative assessment. Again, qualitative assessment is more narrative and field focused and the basic idea here is the approach is uh, inductive or empirical. However, under quantitative, the approach is deductive or logical. Now, let's quickly recap what we have talked about the deductive and the inductive approaches. Now, inductive, I'll remind again, we call it as ISG. This is the best way to remember. So, we move from specific to general under inductive approach and vice versa under deductive approach. So, if this is the cycle, if you move from theory to data and finally to theory, you would have a kind of deductive approach. However, under inductive, we move from specific data and come up to a theory. So, under inductive approach, we also call it as ethnographic inductive logic. What we do is we read, we gain experience, we describe the implications and explain it. However, under hypothetical deductive logic, what we do is we read, we develop the idea, we gather evidence, test the findings and finally discuss the findings. Now, the next type of research here is experimental versus non-experimental. Experimental, as I said, there is a kind of very simple way to explain it. There are two groups, let's say a control group and an experimental group. For control group, I am not manipulating the independent variable. However, for experimental group, I am manipulating the independent variable. Okay. We will be discussing variables more in a separate topic just for now. We will talk about the difference between independent variable and dependent variable. Let's say age varies with IQ. So what is varying here is age. So age becomes the dependent variable. However, age is dependent on what parameter? It is dependent on IQ. So IQ became, becomes the independent variable. So under experimental settings, what we are trying to do is we are trying to manipulate the independent variable and we are trying to see the effect of change on independent variable of change on of independent variable on the dependent variable. So this is done under a control setting. So now what kind of controls can you use under an experiment? These can be physical controls. So I am uh, limiting the number of people who are sitting in the room. So that's a kind of physical control. I am checking out the ambience so that the, the person who is working on the questionnaire is not distracted. It can be selective. So I'm picking up specific age groups. So that's another kind of control or it could be statistical while calculating. So all this we talk about under the experimental study and experimental study is primarily based on cause and effect relationship. However, non-experimental studies use theory and reasoning 
and they have a much wider scope. The common types of non-experimental research that we talk about are exploratory, descriptive and historical. Let's understand these one by one. Now the first one here is the exploratory versus the confirmatory approach. Now let's talk about the confirmatory approach first. Confirmatory approach is a kind of a priori hypothesis that talks about the outcome predictions that are made before uh, the measurement phase begins. So I have a kind of uh, measurement that I'm trying to do and before that I have kind of outcome predictions in mind. Okay, if this would be the event, these would be the outcome. So that's a kind of confirmatory research and these are used to derive uh, from a theory or the result of a previous study that has been already done. However, exploratory is much wider. You are trying to explore new possibilities, new areas where there is existing paucity of knowledge. So let's say there are very few people who are doing research in say uh, how to land on the moon. Uh, or how to sorry how to uh, establish or how to uh, prepare homes at Mars for example so that's a kind of exploratory study so what you are uh, doing is there is a little knowledge about whether there is life possible at Mars or not so what the study would involve is a kind of testing of hypothesis becomes very difficult here so it's a kind of a posteriori hypothesis that we try to do where we are examining the data set and looking at to looking onto the potential relations that could be established between the variables. So that is what is exploratory. Again, uh, exploratory research has high degree of uncertainty. I do not know whether my research would be successful or not. And you are ignoring the subjects. You are not bothering about the subjects per se. So you are ignoring the subject and your only focus is on generating some new discoveries which are, uh, which can be by means of case study, by means of projective techniques or by means of ethnography where you are talking about different cultures. So all those would be kind of exploratory study. The next is explanatory. Now be very careful. There is a difference between exploratory and explanatory. So these are two totally two different types of research methods. Explanatory is also known as casual research and it talks again about the cause effect relationship similar to an experiment, but we are not exactly doing an experiment here. So it would not be a kind of laboratory experiment or a field experiment that we are doing, but we are trying to understand the cause effect relationship. So let's say the impact of X on Y. So impact of rainfall on agriculture, for example, would be an explanatory study. So we can say if the rainfall is less, the agriculture would be less. So that's a kind of uh, cause effect relationship. It employs statistical data. It can sometimes employ experimental methods, but it is not exactly the experimental method. Note again, these two are different. We have experimental method that is different from explanatory method. However, explanatory method can employ experimental method as one of its ways to do the research. Again, explanatory research is much more conclusive. I have strong results when I uh, come up with the findings of an explanatory research and this conclusive research helps to establish a good relation between the cause variable and the effect that has been predicted. So this was the explanatory or casual research and this is very different from the exploratory research where, are, where you are trying to explore the new possibilities. The next is descriptive. Now descriptive research again is interesting. The only thing that you need to know here is you are not dealing with how. The only thing that you are dealing with is what and why. You are not into how things are formed, how things work. So all that parameter of how where you have an element of functioning is totally ignored from the descriptive research. So what are the benefits of multimedia textbook as compared to print textbook? So let's say if you have an exam based book, you would see uh, the YouTube links embedded within the book. So that would be a kind of multimedia textbook. So what would be the advantages of that over a print media? You can say, okay, I'm reading the topic on research methods and I have a link for the types of video. So that's well and fine. I can have the theory as well as the video. So it would be a kind of audio visual 
uh, way of studying so that would be a kind of multimedia textbook the next is more is structure uh, this method descriptive method is more structured as compared to the exploratory method because under exploratory you are trying to define new boundaries this is further divided either into static or dynamic static deals with one single phenomena uh, for example let's say public opinion however dynamic is based on two methods cross sectional or longitudinal longitudinal means how it varies over time so let's say 10 years 10 years back and 10 years from now how the things would vary would be a kind of longitudinal study cross sectional study would be over the same time period so you have the time period that remains the cons uh, that remains constant but you are trying to understand the dis different aspects of the study at the same time so that is cross sectional now descriptive research can further be done under three heads you have either the survey studies where you are trying to assess the characteristics of whole population interpers interrelationship studies where you are trying to see the interrelationship among data it can be in form of case study casual comparative study or correlational study will be understanding casual comparative and correlational further then you have the developmental study which talks about changes with time so predominantly a kind of longitudinal study and this would help you understand the growth trend and the model development the next is historical research now as the name suggests it deals with the past events since it's dealing with the past event it is more qualitative you are not exactly working on data and numbers so it's a kind of qualitative study what harappans used to do how was their lifestyle and how is our lifestyle so that's a kind of historical research we are doing how the lifestyle or settlement patterns have evolved over the years now historical research can be done or the data for it could be collected by two ways primary source or secondary source primary source as the name suggests is the direct source so any artifact any remains or any relics that you find from the ancient time would be the primary source the secondary source would include textbooks newspapers periodicals and journals the criticism for historical research can again be divided into two external criticism and internal criticism the external criticism would say the source that i am using is not genuine so let's say i am using some relic or i am using some artifact but that is not a genuine source it's not as old as the harappan civilization so that's a kind of external criticism the internal criticism talks about the uh, basis for the accuracy and the competence of the writer so the person who is writing the text who is writing in the periodical or the journal is not a competent writer and the, there are flaws with the accuracy of the data or the accuracy of the information now as we said we will be discussing the casual comparative and the correlational study under the interrelational studies um, those are here so casual comparative is also known as ex post facto now the simplest way to understand ex post facto is it's after the fact has happened so it's ex post facto so once the fact has happened you are studying it and that is what is ex post facto and most of the students get struck up in what is ex post facto the name only appears difficult to most of them now important thing to note here is it implies or it uses quasi experimental designs quasi experimental designs is a design where participants are not randomly assigned so you have two groups which have different independent variables and you are comparing them on a uh, dependent variable so you are comparing two different groups with different independent variables on a common dependent variable so independent variable becomes the cause here which is prior to the study and affects the dependent variable that's the uh, the effect so as i said tsunami hit areas and studying the people of the tsunami hit area after the tsunami has occurred would be a kind of ex post facto research and under this study what is important is researcher cannot alter so i cannot uh, let's say i am doing a study where we talk about the impact of overweight on a person's behavior so to uh, study that i can i cannot ethically make a person overweight so that's one of the major limitations i would say of this ex post facto research or what it implies is studies what researcher cannot alter so this is something i cannot alter i cannot make a person overweight just because i want to study the impact of 
the overweight person or I want to study the overweight person's behavior. So this is something that is very very important to understand. You cannot alter the, uh, the study under exposed factor. The next is correlational re uh, research. As the name suggests, what you are trying to do is you are trying to apply correlation here. So you are trying to study relationship between two variables. When you are studying the relationship between two variables, it's kind of quantitative study that you are using and you are moving from minus one, zero to plus one. That's the range of correlation. That means a strong positive correlation is plus one. Minus one is strong negative correlation and zero stands for no correlation. So let's say age varies with IQ. If I say the value is plus one, that means age varies with IQ is strongly correlated. And as you increase in age, IQ increases. If I say they are not correlated, that means they are independent and all the parameters would be randomly distributed. So I do not know what is the effect of age on IQ. When I say age varies with IQ, I would say when it is negative one, uh, it means it's declining. So as you increase in age, as you grow in age, the IQ would decline. So these are the three cases that we try to understand under a correlational research. The next is evaluation research. It determines the impact of social intervention. So the impact of program on any certain, uh, on any specific social problem would be studied under evaluation research. It implies two different methods or I would say it defines, uh, sorry, four different methods. The first is scientific experimental method that is that has good accuracy and objectivity. The next is management oriented strate strategy that in implies either PERT approach or CPM approach. The CPM approach talks about the critical path that should be followed and finally the program evaluation and review. So these are the two methods which work under management technique. Under qualitative anthropogenic uh, uh, anthropological model we talk about the importance of observing and finally, under participant oriented, we talk about whether the approach is client centered or stakeholder approach. So whether it is focused on the client or it is focused on the stakeholder. So these are the various ways under which we try to understand evaluation research. The most important idea to know here is evaluation research understands the impact on of social intervention. So any phenomena that occurs, its impact on social uh, settings or how it deals with social problem is important. Under evaluation, we again have two different types, either a formative uh, evaluation or a summative evaluation. Summative evaluation occurs towards the end, so it's the final outcome. You are trying to examine the effect or the final outcome. And it's similar to the FA and the SA exams that you had used to have in boards. So it's the formative assessment and the summative assessment. So summative evaluation you have towards the end. So what is important is you are studying the outcome. The impact is much broader than the outcome. That's the second parameter under summative uh, uh, evaluation. The next is secondary analysis and meta analysis. Secondary analysis, you re-examine the data to address new questions. So whatever new question come up, you try to understand those and you try to re-examine the data based on the new questions to answer the new questions that come up. And meta-analysis is integrating the various outcomes from multiple studies. So let's say the outcome from four different studies are integrated under one head and that would be meta-analysis. When we talk about formative, we our aim is to improve the object being evaluated so that it performs well when it comes to summative assessment when we can say that in simple terms. So formative is a kind of midterm assessment. So what you are trying to do is you are trying to help student or you are trying to help the participant understand how you could perform better next time. It again involves four strategies. So you have the need assessment when you are trying to understand who needs what and how great or how important that need is. The next is evaluative assessment when you are trying to see whether that evaluation is feasible in that region or not. You are trying to do a structured conceptualization seeing that the participant has a conceptual building on that idea. 
he is working and finally its implementation should be transparent it should not be affected by other parameters and there should be no biasness and finally as we said this is a process which aims to improve the object who is being evaluated so ultimately it's a kind of betterment for the object the next research is diagnostic research under diagnostic research we try to find the cause so it's when you have the things have already happened so let's say a very good example would be a case of medical you have a mosquito bite and a person who already had a malaria uh, already has malaria now once you know the person is diagnosed that he has malaria you are doing a diagnostic research you are trying to understand the cause and emerge from the problem by diagnosis and providing adequate medicines However, under prognostic research, what you do is that region is prone to malaria because that region is a breeding ground for numerous mosquitoes. So what we need to rule out is rule out the breeding ground of mosquitoes. So that is a kind of prognostic research. You are trying to find a relationship between the outcome that is malaria and the predictor here, which is the breeding areas. So you are trying to find out the relation between two and then you take necessary course of action to prevent the outcome. So prognostic research focuses on early detection and cure. Both of these are commonly used in medical sciences. The next important is action research which was asked in January 2017 and since it was asked in January 2017, it, has, it is being important for the next upcoming examinations. So we will discuss this in detail. Now action research as, as, uh, as we talked about the evaluative research or the evaluation research, action research is different. It is a kind of more inclined towards applied research because we are trying to solve an immediate problem. That is the first key element. We are trying to solve the immediate problem. Again, you have the actors who are working to solve that problem. So the main people who are working to solve the problems are known as actors and since you have actors who are working around, you call this as action research. This is led by a team and that could have a practical approach or a participatory approach. So I can involve all the members of the team and work around as a participatory approach or I can have a much practical outlook and work on the individual elements. So that is how you work around with action research. It might include observation, interview, field notes, survey or questionnaire. Now this action research can be further classified into three heads. The individual research where you are studying just one person. You have a collaborative research where you have two or more or a group of person. Or you have a kind of school wide or a region wide action research where you are involving the entire group that is present in that region be it a school be it college or be it any region specific problem what you are trying to address so you have a kind of entire system that works together so these are the basic three ways under which we understand the action research now we have talked about the various types of research now the most important thing here is where what kind of research should be applied where so let's say exploratory research. So what we are trying to do was to explore new ideas or explore the possibilities. So what kind of questions we are, they are asked? What is the case? What are the key factors? That's the basic thing you must keep in mind. Descriptive questions focuses on how many, what is the incidence of X or what, how are X and uh, the relationship between X and Y. Now how many is fine, but we are not talking about how. So be very careful, previously we said how is not a part of descriptive research. So how things function would not be a part, but how many, the count, uh, the, the basic what and how, uh, the what and why would be a part of descriptive research. So how many can be a part of descriptive research, but how things work, how things function would not be a part of descriptive research. Casual questions would ask why, what are the causes for X or Y. Then you have evaluative research would, would, that would understand what was the outcome for X or has X been more successful than Y. So all those questions like these would be addressed under evaluative research. Under predictive, we are trying to see the impact of one on the other. So it's effect of Y on X. So that's a kind of predictive research. Finally, under historical research, what led to happening of Y? or what were the events that led up to why, what caused why. So all these are 
a kind of study where you are trying to understand the past elements so all these would be uh, falling under the historical research so this this was just to give you an idea of what we have studied till now so that you have a kind of mental picture why we need to study the types of research and what are the kinds of research now again one important thing that we missed during the session was Research design and research methodology are two different areas. Under research method, uh, research design, our focus is to work on the end goal. So I have to reach the fi final step by hook or crook. So that's what is research design. However, under research methodology, my focus is to work on the process, how to reach my goal. So when your focus is to reach the end product, uh, the the final step. You either apply historical study or exploratory study. Again, you have the point of de uh, departure that is driven by the research problem or the research question, and it focuses on the logic of uh, logic of the research. However, when you are trying to understand the process. You would do either surveys, you would do document analysis, you would do analysis by means of secondary data, primary data. So all those would go under research methodology and this is driven by the task that you have in hand. So it's mainly the data collection I would say when it comes to uh, quantitative research, when it comes to qualitative research it could be by means of observation or by means of interviews. Now, the basic idea under research methodology is to focus on individual steps and not on the logic whereas research design the total aim is to focus on the logic and move forward for the end product. So with this we cover the types of research and the research methods. We would be working around with more topics related to research methodology like sampling, variable, uh, hypothesis in the further lectures. Have a good day.